This week's constellations are Orion, Taurus, and Canis Major. These wintertime constellations contain many bright stars and are among the most easily recognized in the sky. This view of the sky shows two of the three constellations for this week, along with another bright constellation. The first asterism we'll see is that of Orion. As is the case with most asterisms, there are many different versions of these. This just happens to be one. I'll usually draw it without the arms on here. Orion is supposed to represent a hunter, and in this figure it may look like Orion has a bow in his left hand, and if you want to imagine it that way, that's fine. Our next asterism is that of Taurus. Taurus is supposed to be a bull, which is hard to see here, but a big V is not so hard to spot. Our next asterism is for a different constellation, that of Gemini, the twins. And with these, it's not hard to imagine these figures as two people standing next to each other. These three constellations are usually thought of as wintertime constellations, although you can see them in late summer before dawn, in the fall late at night, and then you can still see them in the evening sky a ways into April. The first star that we'll concentrate on in here is Alpha Tari, which has the proper name of Aldebaran. Aldebaran has a magnitude of 0 0.87, which makes it the 13th brightest star in the sky. Its name, translated from Arabic, means the follower, probably because Aldebaran follows the Pleiades, rising a little after them and then following them across the sky. Our next star is Betelgeuse, which is Alpha Orionis. On average, Betelgeuse is about the eighth brightest star in the sky. It's difficult to measure the diameter of it precisely. It's more than 600 light years away. But size estimates for Betelgeuse range from a low of larger than the asteroid belt to a high of larger than Jupiter's orbit. And we call a star like this a red supergiant. And you can, with the naked eye, see the redness of Betelgeuse. Another bright star in Orion is Bellatrix. You may have heard that name in a Harry Potter movie. Bellatrix is a name that means female warrior and was transplanted to this star the name originally belonged to another star. The brightest star in Orion is Rigel, down here. It's the seventh brightest star in the night sky. It's probably more than 800 light years away, although at that distance there's a lot of uncertainty in the measurement of distances. The European Space Agency has a space mission called Gaia, and when that mission is completed, we'll have a much better measurement for the distance to a lot of these stars. Rigel is a blue supergiant and it has a mass about 18 times that of the Sun. The last star in Orion that you need to know for this class is Safe down here. That's a star name I've mispronounced most of my life. I learned it as Scythe, but the correct pronunciation is Safe. SAFE is a star that has a surface temperature of over 26,000 Kelvin, which is just about five times the temperature of our sun. Uh, SAFE emits most of its energy in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. Let's take a look at a slightly different part of the sky here. This picture shows Orion right in the center of the view and also shows Taurus to the right of Orion. There's Orion there without the arms this time. And then Taurus is over here. To the lower left of Orion is Canis Major, the greater dog. Most of the stars in Canis Major aren't particularly bright except for one, Sirius, which is the brightest star in our night sky. 
The name of the star comes from ancient Greek for glowing or scorcher. This star is bright both because it's near to us and due to the fact that it puts out about 25 times the energy of the sun. Sirius is actually part of a binary system. Its companion, known as Sirius B, is a white dwarf that can be seen under excellent sky conditions with a telescope as small as four inches. You might wonder how a constellation that looks like a dox hunt managed to be called Canis Major. Well, in the same part of the sky is Canis Minor. It's right up here. And compared to Canis Minor, Canis Major really is the greater dog. The brightest star up in Canis Minor is called Procyon. That's not something that you need to know for this week, but I wanted to point it out because there's a trio of stars here that form a, an asterism that people like to look at. Our other stars to know in this week's constellations include Aldebaran over there in Taurus. In Orion, we have Betelgeuse, Bellatrix, Rigel, and safe. I'm going to fade all these out except for three. Betelgeuse, Sirius, and Procyon form an asterism that's high in the sky on winter evenings. And you may notice that those three are just about equidistant apart. And that forms what we call an equilateral triangle. And we call this the winter triangle. You can probably guess which season that's most easily visible in. Now I want to show you something about finding things in this part of the sky. Orion is usually easy to spot once you know it look, what it looks like. And you can use it to find things. There's Orion. The three stars in a row in the middle of that asterism have been called Orion's Belt since long before that term was used in Men in Black. And you can use the belt as a sort of pointer. If you head to the right using Orion's Belt, it sort of points to Aldebaran up there. And if you move to the left using Orion's Belt, it does a better job of pointing straight at Sirius. Now let's take a slightly different view of this part of the sky to see some neighboring constellations. Spot anything in here? It's a little tricky. Orion isn't quite as easy to see here. In fact, it's not all visible. The view you see here is what you might see if you could look toward the east on a fall evening late enough that uh, Taurus is up and Orion is coming up above the eastern horizon. Taurus is there and Orion is down there in the lower right, most of it. You can't see safe, but you can see the rest of it. To the left of Taurus and connected to it, they share a star in their asterisms, is the constellation of Orija. Above Orija is the asterism and the stars of Perseus. That's a nice thing to look at with binoculars. And below one of the feet of Perseus is a little cluster of stars that actually belong to Taurus, the Pleiades star cluster, or as they're called in Japan, Subaru. The emblem on Subaru cars represents this star cluster. The cluster is about 400 light years away, and it is a great binocular object to look at. Binoculars are the best thing to look at the Pleiades with. Now let's consider a couple of things that you need a telescope to be able to see. We'll look at a slightly different view of this part of the sky, maybe an hour or two later in the evening than this picture we're looking at now. In this, Orion is a bit higher above the eastern horizon. Taurus is up there near the top of the field of view. There are those two asterisms. Within the constellation of Taurus is Messier Object 1. Right about there, a fairly easy thing to spot. We'll take a look at a picture of this. 
Now this is a nice color picture taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. You would not see this through one of our telescopes. It'll just be a gray smudge. This is known as the Crab Nebula, probably because the shape of this nebulous region is like the shell of a crab. The nebula is what's known as a supernova remnant, and that's the cloud of expanding gas from an exploded star. When the light from this supernova explosion first reached Earth in 1054 AD, it was visible in the daytime sky for about three weeks. And for almost two years, this remnant was visible in the nighttime sky as looked like a star before it faded from view. Today it's still an easy object to spot in a small telescope, and you can also see it in binoculars. It's about 6,500 light years away, which means in 1054, when they saw that, the light had been traveling for 6,500 years already. Another popular object in this part of the sky is in Orion, and it's Messier Object 42, known as the Orion Nebula. To us, it looks like one of the stars in Orion's sword, but if you just take a pair of binoculars and aim it at this direction, you'll be able to see this cloud. It won't look like this through binoculars or through one of our telescopes. Again, this is a long time exposure picture taken with a large telescope. The Orion Nebula is about 1300 light years away and is a region where there's a good deal of star formation going on as parts of this nebula collapse to form new stars. That's it for this week's constellations.